Hello, my name is Suresh Chari. I'm a gastroenterologist at the Mayo Clinic with a particular interest in pancreatic diseases, especially the association between uh, diabetes and pancreatic cancer. And I'm here today to talk more about a recent study we have launched called, called the EXPAND trial. It stands for Examination of the Pancreas in Nuance of Diabetes. And it's the first prospective uh, study looking at possibly screening for pancreatic cancer uh, which is non-familial or sporadic. Uh, the study is funded by the uh, Sandler Kenner Foundation, a, a, a fairly new foundation which is dedicated to early diagnosis of pancreatic cancer. You can learn more about this foundation at helpsfightpancreaticcancer.org. To give you a little bit more background about the study and why we are doing it, um, we have been interested in the association uh, between diabetes and pancreatic cancer for the past 15 years. And over the course of many studies, uh, we have basically come to the conclusion that pancreatic cancer causes diabetes. And uh, this diabetes uh, occurs fairly uh, in a few years before the cancer diagnosis, and um, generally about two to three years. And we believe that this is the only uh, signal that the cancer gives before it becomes symptomatic. And in pancreatic cancer, symptoms are associated with advanced cancer. And so by the time patients present to us with symptoms, it's too far gone and we really can't offer very much. So our thought process was that uh, if we were to identify a patient with new onset diabetes in the general population, uh, could we screen uh, a subset of these uh, for pancreatic cancer? So in our previous studies, we have looked at this association both ways. So how often does diabetes occur in pancreatic cancer? And our studies have consistently shown that at least half the patients with pancreatic cancer have diabetes. And in about a quarter of pancreatic cancer patients, this diabetes occurs at least six months before the cancer diagnosis, which is a fairly good window of opportunity to, to find uh, smaller cancers than what we do at the time of diagnosis. We've also looked at uh, how, uh, what proportion of patients with diabetes have pancreatic cancer. Um, the only study looking at this at a population level has been done from us by us at Olmsted County, which is the county in which uh, Mayo Clinic is. And what we found was that um, uh, one in 125 patients with new ones of diabetes had pancreatic cancer, which is about 0.85%. This is significantly uh, less than what we would expect in the general population for pancreatic cancer inc incidence, but still uh, quite low in terms of looking for cancer uh, in new ones of diabetes. So the EXPAND trial um, basically uh, is trying to study uh, various aspects of this uh, strategy uh, to diagnose pancreatic cancer in nuance of diabetes. The first thing we want to show is that we can identify new diabetes as soon as it begins, uh, and we have been able to do that using the electronic uh, medical records of the Mayo Clinic and have successfully shown that we can di diagnose or identify patients with new diabetes as soon as the blood sugars rise. The second part of the uh, trial is to see uh, if patients with new onset diabetes will consent for a study looking for pancreatic cancer. And at this point, we are recruiting patients with new onset diabetes. We're collecting stool, saliva, and blood from them uh, for future studies. And in a subset of these patients, we are examining their pancreas a little bit more closely to see if they might have pancreatic cancer. Now, as I said before, it's hard to justify screening everybody with new onset diabetes for pancreatic cancer. So we have come up with a couple of strategies to uh, s further risk stratify this group to identify who might have a higher chance of having pancreatic cancer. We had observed previously that patients with new onset diabetes due to pancreatic cancer lost weight even before their diagnosis of diabetes. This is in contrast with type 2 diabetics, the more common type of diabetes, where patients tend to gain weight. So in the EXPAND trial, we are taking patients with new onset diabetes and we've lost at least 5 pounds, and um, those are the patients we are screening for further. The other group that we are uh, taking uh, for screening are patients who have an elevated blood marker for pancreatic cancer called CA199. While in advanced pancreatic cancer, it is markedly elevated, 
we expect that in early cancer there will be some patients will have a mild renovation in, in CA99. And our studies suggest that probably half the patients with early pancreatic cancer might have an elevation in CA99. So the EXPAND trial basically uh, is looking for patients with truly new onset diabetes. That is, they shouldn't have had diabetes for a long time. They should have had it at least for six months or a year at the most. And who fulfill one of the other two criteria, which is that they should have lost some weight, which is at least five pounds, or they should have an elevation in CA99. And these patients undergo high-resolution CT scan and an endoscopic ultrasound to further evaluate the pancreas. What we hope to learn from the, uh, uh, the, these studies is that we'll understand what the pancreas looks like in patients with new onset diabetes, and we'll try to confirm that we can indeed find small cancers, which we think will not be visible on a CT scan, but we will, will be visible on the endoscopic ultrasound. So that's, in a nutshell, is a summary of the EXPAND trial. Thank you.